Virtual reality can make you feel like you're living inside another world, and it can also make you feel dizzy and nauseous. Why does this happen, and how can we design VR experiences that don't trigger motion sickness? Hi, I'm Amy Jo Kim, founder of the Game Thinking Academy. Today, we're here talking with Jesse Shell, CEO of Shell Games, creators of the hit VR games, I Expect You to Die, and Until You Fall. Be sure to stay to the end to hear Jesse's take on the surprising role of peripheral vision in VR design. The core with VR, the center of everything with VR, is that feeling of presence, that feeling that I'm in a space, that I'm in a place. To put it differently, the thing we often say is VR is not a technology for the eyes. It's a technology for the body. VR creates the illusion that your body is in a place that it is not. And so as a result, we often start all of our VR thinking body first. What does this world have to do with my body? And that has to do with, well, what am I touching? What am I holding? We did a game called Until You Fall, a sword fighting game where you hold a sword in each hand. And that one is all about moving and like, how does it feel to move my body in certain ways? Because if you're doing a VR game and it's not about your body, why are you doing it in VR? Why don't you just do this on a screen? Why, why are you going through all the headaches that VR presents? Motion sickness is an incredibly weird thing. It's very different for different people. The real complexity of the relationship between the eyes, the body, and the vestibular system, which is your system of balance. If you understand the way those three things interact, you can figure out the ways that you can kind of work with it. First, you have to understand the reason that you get motion sick. People get motion sick because your body is trying to save your life. Historically, with evolution, the body has learned that there are certain toxins that you might ingest from, say, maybe a, a poisonous mushroom that are going to kill you. And But before they kill you, they have an effect on your brain where your sense of vision and your sense of balance become disconnected. And your body's learned that, oh, if that's happening, you better throw up because you're going to die if you don't. And so that's where this comes from. And that's great because it saves us from dying from poison mushrooms, but it has side effects. It means that if I'm on a boat, I might get sick. If I read in the car, I might get sick. And if I do certain VR experiences, I might get sick. And so understanding that, there end up being these interesting workarounds. Some people just say, I don't care if some people get motion sick, we're just going for it. And some people will deal with it. I don't love that technique because that really cuts out a lot of your audience. Some people have found that games involving climbing, if you pull yourself through the world with your arms, that actually works pretty well in terms of reducing motion sickness because your body accepts like, oh, okay, it's not that my sense of balance and my vision are, are disconnected because the vision is connected with my arm motion. I'm going to accept that. And that's okay. Even though we're not really moving through the world, like I get it. Then there's the whole na nature of linear motion versus accelerated and decelerated motion. In other words, your vestibular system can't detect motion, actually. It can only detect acceleration and deceleration right? So like you're sitting in a plane, the plane's going 700 miles an hour. You're not like, oh, right. You don't feel that because there's no acceleration on you. You're just sitting there at a fixed speed. But when this plane is taking off or slowing down, or if it hits a mountain, you notice all of those things. And so as a result, linear motion in a VR world, your body tends to accept, but it's speeding up and slowing down. That can make you really, really sick. And then you get into the question of what is the relationship between the mind and the eyes? Like we made a game until you fall, our sword fighting game. A lot of it is you stand and fight. Okay, great. I don't need to move around because I'm standing and fighting. That's fine. But then I need to go look for the next enemy. Well, we do this weird thing called vignetting, which is all about understanding the nature of the, the vision system. So our eyes in the center, we have all this detail. You know, what your eyes focus on your fovea, wow, you can see a lot of detail. But on the edges, you can't see a lot of detail. You can't read, you can't do a lot of things because you just don't have the pixels. However, those parts are really motion sensitive over there. If you've ever been sitting on a train or a bus and the one next to you moves and you feel like you're moving, that's what that is, right? Yeah, and you look up and you're like, oh no, I'm not moving. That other bus is moving. Okay, that's what that is. So as a result, where you get that feeling of motion is the stuff on the sides. What you can do 
is when someone moves into VR world, if you telescope in a kind of iris in and just show them this little circle of the real world, and out here you show kind of a fixed grid that's like locked in with their reality, it actually does an awful lot to remove your motion sickness because that's the part of your vision that's being looked at by the brain is on the edges. In the fovea, it's not really looking at that. Now, that's super annoying if you're like, I'm going to go wander around this garden and see this beautiful garden, and suddenly all you can see is this little circle. That's annoying. However, if you're fighting for your life and you're like, where's the next enemy? Where's the next target? Your brain has already tunnel vision. And as a result, weirdly, you don't notice that we've done this. You kind of know, wow. but it doesn't bother you very much because all you care about is like what's in that circle anyway. And until you fall, you can see we, we do vignetting uh, mm -hmm. in there. Another game that had pioneered it was a game called Eagle's Flight. They do a very special vignetting. It's a game where you're an eagle and you and you and other eagles are playing this weird game of capture the flag. And they do a very special vignetting where they only block out parts of the area that you're moving and are close to. Anyway, so there's, there's a number of games that use these techniques, but it's a thing everybody is experimenting with right now. And there's, there's plenty of techniques that work well. Did you enjoy hearing Jesse's approach to building body first VR experiences? I have a confession. I love this stuff. Bringing together game design, psychology, and neuroscience hits me right in the sweet spot. What about you? Do you like this? Did you find this illuminating? Leave me a comment. I would love to know what you think. If you'd like to learn more about game design for VR, check out this video right here. We publish hot tips for startup founders every week, and you can subscribe here so you level up your innovation skills. Here's to getting smarter together. I'll see you next week.